Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. We're talking about switches. Last time we talked about an, an ultrasonic switch. Today we're talking about a piezoelectric switch. Therefore we need to understand the piezoelectric effect a little bit. How is this working? What is piezoelectric? Yeah. So I want to explain it briefly. Piezoelectric materials yeah, are usually some sort of crystals. Yeah. So the materials are crystals usually in a hexagonal structure eh? with hexagonal structure what does it mean hexagonal structure let's draw a hexagonal I hope I can manage that this hexagon looks somehow symmetrical because usually crystals are very symmetric. Yeah? This is why they look that good. Yeah? And the atoms in such crystals are organizing themselves in a hexagonal structure. And usually these are ions. So you will have here at the corners of this hexagon, you have some positively charged ions, atoms, yeah? and at the, in between you have some negatively charged ions yeah? in this crystal. And they are organizing themselves in this hexagonal structure and if they grow large from the outside you also see this hexagonal structure, for instance a quartz crystal, a mountain crystal, yeah? It's something like that. It's also used in 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 applications. It's also it has a piezoelectric effect. All right. And now let's lo have a look at the center of these of these charges. Yes. Yeah? So let's have a look at the center of the positive charges. So here, these are the positive charges, and if every charge is of the same value. We could draw it like that yeah? and see here is the center of the charge, right? Center of the positive charge. Let's draw the center of the negative charge. Yeah? Since this is a very uniform and very, very symmetric crystal structure, yeah? we will realize, aha, uh -huh, look at that. It is exactly at the same position. So we have also the center of the negative charges at the same position of this crystal. Now that's not really a big surprise, I would say. And now we apply force. With applied force, we apply force from the top and from the bottom. 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 With applied force, we're going to squeeze this a little bit. Yeah? So this hexagonal structure, not enough force to break it. Yeah? However, quite enough force to squeeze this crystal structure a little bit. So this crystal structure will flatten out. Yeah? So it will not be a nice hexagon. It will simply be a squeezed hexagon. All right, but the, 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 the atoms, they will stay at the position. So here we had the negative, the negative, the negative, and here we have the positive, the positive, the positive. Uh, here, the positive, the positive, the positive. Let's also write in there these minuses and the pluses. And let's make again the centers of the charges. So here we have, here. If we have a look at the center of this charge, we'll realize it will be here somewhere. Okay, here's the center of the charge of the blue. And now let's have a look at the center of the charge of the of the it will also be in this. So here we are symmetrical, however, we will be down here a little bit. So we have now shifted the center of the charges 
by a little thing, a little, a little, something little, all right? Here we have now suddenly a charge displacement. This here is called charge. Displacement. All right? And we applied here. This is because we applied a force F. Yeah? At the surface of such crystals, of such material, you can measure this charge displacement. Yeah? This charge displacement at the first at the surface, you suddenly measure some voltage, however, it's not really voltage, it's just some charges. Yeah? And to prevent those charges from disappearing, from traveling to the other side, because there, you know, if this there's force, yeah? and and uh, these materials need usually be good isolators. And they are. Yeah? So this can be measured. at the crystal surface. Yeah? So this charge displacement can be measured at the crystal surface. And this is this delta Q, which you can measure, is some constant multiplied by the force. And this is the so-called piezo electric constant. Depends on the material. Yeah, there are several materials in use and so on. So, yeah, this is how this is working. And if you are measuring, you need to have a special special amplifier for these charges because this has really, really to have a really high input uh, resistance because those small charges, yeah. they need to stay at the crystal because otherwise they cannot be measured and so on. So we need a special special type of amplifier called charge amplifier. However, then you could trigger a switch once it is pressed. And this is how those things are working. Yeah? This is how those things are working. There's a tiny crystal inside. This tiny crystal is getting deformed. And because of the charges at the surface, we are switching with... It will be amplified by some amplifier and we are switching a switch. Okay. This is how piezoelectric switches are working. This is the piezoelectric effect, which, by the way, can be used also in reverse. So this means if I apply a voltage to a piezoelectric material, this piezoelectric material will be deformed. Okay? And if I apply a voltage in a periodic pattern, this piezoelectric material will start to swing. And this is exactly what is happening here in this, in this stuff, you remember? This was from last time, from last video, this was this, where one was issuing yeah, a, an ultrasonic sound, yeah, and this ultrasonic sound is here generated with a piezoelectric crystal, which will, the, 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 the voltage will bring this to swinging, yeah, so this piezoelectric effect is also reversible, yeah? so you can use it in both ways. Piezoelectric switches. This is how this is working. Yeah, so switches, proximity switches, mechanical, uh, in, inductive read switches. I think we've talked enough about switches. Huh? Now let's measure distance. Right? We not want to determine if something is there, we want to determine how much or how far away something is. Right? Distance measuring. Distance measuring. Next topic, topic of next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.